back to another Thursday night fly tying session. Uh, my name is Tim Hepworth here on behalf of Fly Fishing Bow River. Uh, we're here again at Caraville Craft Brewery. Um, they've been great hosts and so we're thankful to be coming back here again. They've given us uh, lots of freedom to work with their space so we're thankful for that. Um, we're going to get on to a couple flies this week. We're going to do uh, some stone flies. So we're going to start out with a nymph and then we're going to go to one of our more popular dry flies. Kind of an easy one to tie to called uh, uh, Chubby Chernobyl. Um, so we'll get on with that. Kind of before we get going though, I want to say for the next few weeks as we kind of progress, we want some input into what we're tying. So if you guys have any suggestions at home or for us here, um, just let us know. If there's a fly you want to know how to tie or you just want to be able to share with people and you want us to tie it, uh, just let us know. We're going to kind of compile a list and we'll plan weeks, months ahead of time so that we can kind of all have you guys on the same page and that way for people at home if you want to buy materials ahead of time we'll have all the packages already ready to rock and you can order them so you have them in your hand when we're when we start tying here okay as always if you have any questions at all for us at home too just uh, type them up and we'll uh, we'll answer them the best we can and same for you guys here yeah I think that's all before we get rolling so as you can see here what I have in my vise we have uh, we call it a jimmy legs it's a pretty pretty simple guide fly to tie um, we tie lots and lots of them because we use them lots and we can, uh, we can tie them lots of different ways as well. So we can tie them weighted, we can tie them unweighted, use them as a dropper, we have some options. Today we're going to tie a weighted version of it um, so we could use it on a nymph rig. Alright, so we're going to start off, let's, uh, let's put in your guys' packages there, you should have uh, your stonefly package for the jimmy legs. Grab one of those hooks. So you got enough uh, material to tie two flies for each of these again. So you can do one at home. So we'll go ahead and grab that, uh, that hook. Today we're actually using a, this is a dry fly hook. It's a size four. It is a mustad hook. They're pretty good. It, you can vary the size of these that you, um, that you wanna use. Sometimes you can tie them a little bigger. I actually like to tie some really small ones as well, especially when we tie a golden stone version of it. <clears throat> you can use them in a bunch of different waters that way. And it's kind of versatile. Okay, uh, use whatever color thread you want. I'm going to use a darker thread. I like to use a 140. It, it's not a big deal. It's just that we're going to put some lead on this on this hook, some or wire wrap, so we want to be able to kind of even them out. So if you have a little bit bigger thread, it has a bigger diameter, it's a little easier to, to even it out. So let's start by just getting our um, our thread on the up at the eye. We're going to work that thread all the way back to about the barb. We're gonna lay down a nice base of uh, thread. And once you've done that, just do some nice spiral wraps, kind of open back up to just behind the eye, giving it about an eye's length behind where we're gonna stop. You can trim off that excess. How's it going? Peter, how's it going? <laughs> hey guys. Man, it's like driving the red deer for me. <laughs> I did drive from red deer, imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> we're uh, next guys we're gonna work on setting uh, we're gonna tie in both the antenna on the front and the tail on the back in one in one piece of uh, this floss leg stuff so it's actually you can tie it with rubber legs this stuff works a little nicer it's got a, a nice shine through the whole thing we actually call it floss so it's got a nice stretch to it. it's a little flatter and it ties in the legs splay a little nicer so we're gonna take one of the pieces that you have I'm gonna get you to fold it over so we got a loop on one end and make sure they're nice and even on the other, okay? And now I want you to grab that end that's got the loop on it so we can see that loop there. We're going to slide our fingers back. We're going to create ourselves a little loop about that size. That makes sense? Maybe a little bigger. Now we're going to take that loop and we're going to set it right there and keep a good pinch on it. We're just going to do a nice loose collecting wrap with our... Uh, our thread. We're going to go over top of that and pinch it down. This, uh, this material can sometimes want to go around the hook on you if you're not careful. So you're just using a nice loose wrap the first time, one more over and tighten down. And then you can adjust it if you need to. So if you need to slide that back up on top of the hook, you can just grab it and do so. Oh, I didn't even realize I got a nice little Finding Nemo bandit on my finger. You know you have children when. <laughs> didn't even realize. That's awesome. How about that? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you'd either be Dora the Explorer or Finding Nemo. <laughs> okay, guys. So I want you to keep fingers on that and some tension on that uh, on that floss in the back. And all we're going to do is we're going to kind of stretch it tight. You don't want to pull it so hard that it pulls that loop on you. But you're going to take some nice wraps, securing it on top of the hook. 
So if it tries to turn and go away from you like so, we're going to want to unwrap those a little bit. We want it to sit right on top of the hook. We're going to take that all the way back. And we're going to finish that right about where the hook bend starts, which is on this hook right about at the barb. You should have some slack. and Your fly should kind of look like this. What we're going to eventually do is we're going to go up and we're going to snip this loop. But if you actually leave it like it is for right now, it actually, uh, it's a little nicer because it doesn't want to get tangled in everything else we're doing. I want you to find that wire that we gave you as well now. So this, what I'm using, I think is a little bit bigger diameter than you, but it's a 0.035 lead wire. Um, depending on where you're fishing this, even in, in Alberta, you can't use lead in the parks, so you gotta be conscious if you tied them with lead that you, you can't use them there. So you can use lead-free stuff if you need to do that. So we're gonna, what we wanna do is we wanna create some th thread wrap, or sorry, some wire wraps, kind of in this top third of the fly. So we don't want them to come back to the hook point, but we wanna start just in front of them and we want them to stop about where we tied in um, those legs, maybe a little bit of space behind. So if you have more wire than, than you need, then just pinch it off. It's pretty easy to break. But what I like to do is I'll just lean a little piece up, I'll pinch it over, I'll hold that pinch, and I'll start to wrap. And you can kind of adjust it on there if you need to. What we don't want is to get a double wrap of the wire. You want it to be nice and smooth all the way up. You can slide it up and down the hook a little bit if you need to. We don't need a ton of it, but we do need uh, enough that we're actually, what this is doing is gonna create a bit of the thorax of this fly. So it's gonna be a little bit bigger here than, than otherwise. And you can pinch it off or you can cut it. Just don't use really good scissors if you're cutting the wire. So guys, for this, this, uh, this particular version of this fly, we're most likely going to fish this um, in a nymph form, so we're under an indicator. If we were to leave that lead wire off, we could definitely fish this as a dropper underneath, even underneath the fly that we're going to tie next, which is this chubby Chernobyl. We could fish it under that if it's unweighted, but with the weight, it's probably um, a little too heavy for that. Um, but if we were to leave, all we'd have to do is leave this lead off, and we could, uh, we could make it work as a dropper as well. So go ahead and find that little piece of... Uh, coffee chenille so this stuff here it's uh it's amazing at how close this actually looks to a, a stonefly's body and it's really good stuff so we're gonna we will have finished with that thread back at the very back end again and that's where we're gonna tie this in so when you can like we did before I'm peeling off a little bit of those fibers so I'm exposing that thread that's on the inside and that's what I'm gonna tie down so right ahead where those legs are at the back, again, taking a collecting wrap. Make sure that's good and secured. Give it a little tug, make sure it doesn't come out. And we're gonna advance our thread forward to about the middle of those lead wire wraps. And what we're actually gonna wanna do is come back a little bit and just even out that, um, make a little bit of a ramp up to that wire, up to that lead wrap. It doesn't have to be a perfect one, but just enough that it's, it makes a little bit more of a gradual rise and then bring that wire up, or sorry, that thread up and leave it in the middle of your wire. Yeah. Sorry. There you go, no worries. <clears throat> all right, are we all there? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna wrap this up the hook. Um, we're gonna get to about where that thread is and we're gonna trap it and we're gonna tie it off and that's when we're gonna tie in our legs. Some people tie in their legs at this point. I hate fighting with them, trying to wrap the chenille around. So for me, it saves a little bit of uh, that hassle by just going ahead. What we, do, we don't wanna do is if you watch those legs, if we start wrapping too close to them, we'll actually take the, the far side one and it'll start to pull it down. So we want to make sure that we keep that chenille just a little bit ahead of it. Do one full wrap at the back end and then start angling forward. Just a nice touching wrap. We don't want to be wrapping over top of itself. We'll get up to there. We'll trap that, uh, sh that chenille and we'll, once we have it trapped, we're actually going to leave it right there. 
and just let it hang or pull it out of the way. And then we're going to grab a piece of that floss again that we have. So again, guys, we're going to double that over. We're going to get the tips even here. We're going to make sure it's even down to that point of that loop, and we're going to snip that loop this time. But we don't want to lose those. We want to keep them nice and even. So we're going to be left with two strands. Just let me know, guys, if I'm going too fast for you. I can slow down and explain something. Don't hesitate to ask a question. There's no dumb questions, so just ask away if you need to. Okay. So you could tie each of these legs in individually if you wanted, but we can skip a step by doing them together. So being that both ends of this are even, I'm going to fold them over my thread. I'm going to make them come even on the other side as well. So I'm whole, I have all, the, all of the floss coming up like this. I'm going to get a good grasp on it. And now by pulling on my bobbin, I can control where this is going to land. So I'm going to hold that up in the air. I'm going to suck it right down on top. I'm secure it there. So holding that tension on my bobbin, when I let go of those legs, half are going to go to the front, half are going to go to the back. And now I'm just going to take one, maybe two more wraps to kind of hold them in place. And then all I got to do is grab them, and I can squeak them down to the side that I want them. And grab them both and move them around. Like so. If you've ever made a mistake on them, you can just... Putting those three wraps allows you to still move them, um, but if you did many more, you wouldn't be able to adjust them. So it's nice, it keeps enough tension. The weight of the bobbin kind of holds it in place, and you can adjust those around if you need to. How's it going? It's good? All right. All right, that looks good, guys. So what we actually use this, this chenille now is, uh, this is actually what we're going to do to control where those legs end up. So we're going to do one more wrap behind the legs, then we're going to go once between the legs, then we're going to pull the legs back, do a tight one right, behind, right in front of them, and then one more wrap to, the, to right to behind the eye, and that's where we're going to tie off. Okay? So once behind, once in the middle, once in front, one more, and then we're going to tie it off. But by doing this, we can control where those legs are going to wind up. So I'm going to go once behind. Sorry, I just need to advance. Just make sure you advance your thread forward to the eye. So we're going to go once behind. I'm going to go once right through the middle. Once right tight in front. So now your legs are going to maybe point straight up. We can adjust those in a second. Do one more. Remember not to crowd the eye probably as bad as I just did. And then we're going to tie it off. And take some nice wraps to secure that into place. And then we can get that chenille out of the way. And now we're going to be wound up with those four legs. And now you can actually move those legs around a little bit because that chenille is holding them in place but we have a little bit of freedom to, to actually move them around. So, after we whip finish this, we're pretty much done. We're going to snip the legs and we're going to get them to the length we want. Here's my whip finish tool. So whip finish, take a spot of glue if you need to. I'll do a couple just to make sure. I'm not going to use any glue on this this time. So. down and we'll snip that thread out of the way. It's kind of nice with how we, the way we tied in this floss in the front, when you go to actually tie the hook on, it looks like the, the hook is crowded, but when you can actually just pull that, those legs back and you're able to get your thread in there quite nicely. So we're gonna just open up that front loop now. So we have our antenna, we can kind of move those around a little bit as well, kind of get them to 
where you want. A little bit of maneuverability there. Sorry, I got it. it's hard to look past the light to you. All right, how you doing? You good? Yeah. Okay. So kind of the best way to trim these legs, um, if you go to a fly shop and you buy these, I don't know if they leave them super long for you to fish them that way or so that you can choose to cut them to length. Um, but everybody likes them a little different. I personally like them a little bit longer. Um, you're probably wondering why we didn't put three legs in. If you've ever tied a jimmy legs and added a third set of legs, you'll realize how complicated that is. Um, so this fly is something we tie a lot of. When you're tying it for guide season or for yourself, you're just you're whipping them out really fast. I don't believe for a second that a stone fly or that a trout looks and counts the legs on these. I don't think it's important as much as some might think. Um, but by leaving them a little longer, what it does do is give it a lot of movement. So you get a lot of legs that are moving around the body of the fly. And if they are that concerned about that third set of legs, we're, uh, we're maybe distracting a little bit from doing that. If you grab all four of those legs and you can kind of pull them upwards, don't pull too hard, just enough to get them oriented up. It's kind of a good way to gauge where we're going to cut them. So what I like to do is I like to imagine the length of the body of the chenille that I've done here. So the length of that fly, that's about the length plus maybe a little tiny bit more of the length of the, of the legs I'm going to trim off. So thinking about there, if you're going to err on the side of caution, err on the long side of it, okay? We'll cut them. And then we can orient those back down again. So we got a nice pattern that looks like that. The four legs coming off. And then on the back end, guys, we're going to just pull them straight out. And we want to, I, the way in my head that I always gauge is I gauge from the point of the hook to the back of the hook bend. I imagine replicating that length or matching the front, whichever you feel like doing. If anything, err on the side of long in comparison to the front. Because once you cut them, they seem to retract a little bit and seem like they're, uh, they shrink up. And there you have it. That's our stonefly nymph. How did that go? Good. Nice job, nice, nice. He's alive. Nice job. I think I should have gassed these ones more though, the middle one. And this one, this one did stick down. Oh yeah, but you can kind of maneuver them though with that, with that chenille. I don't think it really matters too much. <laughs> How's it going? Having fun. Having fun, that's good. Three legs. You did it with three, a cheater. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. It takes me, it takes me too long. I'm tying a thousand of them. Good boys, good here. Nice, that looks good, looks good. Yeah, a little too short? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's right. I understand how to tie it. Yeah, you got, you get how to tie it, that's do, good. Do it again. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure that looks good. You just working on trying to gather the wraps up on it? Yeah, we're just going to go forward with it. And, uh, right there. And so we wanted to wrap it up the hook that far. Yeah, it's a little far. We're running out of space. How are you tied it? The way I tie it? <laughs> the way you tied it? Sorry. Hey, Curtis. What's up, man? Good to see you. All right, guys. Anybody back home got any questions for us about this fly? That's I know that felt probably pretty quick, but it is actually a pretty quick fly. So you should be able to do quite a few of these if you, if you sit down and devote, uh, devote some time to them. Um, you'll find really quickly you get a system. So even on my uh, whatever this little wood base is here, I, I have little Sharpie marks. And so the, the flies I tie a lot of, I'll mark out this, this is how much chenille. So you're not wasting chenille. You have the perfect amount. This is how long the legs need to be. Whatever it is you're doing, you can just kind of get a system, make a whole bunch of things, cut them up into place, and then you can just fire out 20 or 30 of them pretty fast. So, But it's a great little fly. Um, it's a good early season fly. 
kind of just before the stoneflies do their hatch, so right about when the high water's done on the bow and we're actually able to get on it, that's when we're gonna fish these a lot. Um, as the nymphs kind of come up later in the day, so a lot of times we will fish this underneath um, some type of hopper later in the day as well, um, when, the, when the adults start to kind of die off. So it's a good fly, good all around fly. Uh, like I said, you can tie it weighted or unweighted. You can fish it in kind of different ways. All right. We'll just take a minute here, let everybody catch up. If you want to tie that second fly you have, go ahead. I'm just going to give a little bit of help here. I go a little fast for you. It's okay. <laughs> I got all day. I'm retired. <laughs> you, you're retired. That's right. <laughs> I'm retired. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. I retired. That's perfect answer. Yeah, that is the perfect answer. <laughs> so we're going to try to set that about in the... So if you could think of halving this, we're going to kind of go right about at halfway. Okay, so one, one second here, what we'll do, we'll take this off for a sec. I'm sorry. Needs to wrap more. So we're gonna, where is your thread once I take this off here? So let's wrap forward to about here. And so we're gonna actually take, take this and wrap it up to about there, so we're more or less halfway. Oh, I see, okay. Oop. Let's get you to trim that out of the way, then you won't have to see it. Yeah, and then we'll stick those legs in. Yeah. Tim, are you tying anything else? Uh, yeah, we're gonna tie uh, an adult stone as well. Oh, okay. So we're gonna do a chubby, chubby Chernobyl. Is there any extras? Yeah, there is. Yeah, you want some? Sure. Yeah. I'll tie. Sure. Oh, I think we have an extra one here, actually. Whatever you can eat out of there. This is what I need to put together. <laughs> so, totally. I didn't even look at the address until today. It's oh, yeah. It's like two blocks from the work. Oh, really? It's right so it's, here. oh, you're right over there? Yeah. Nice and close. <laughs> Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie in. You can let this you can let this unravel a little bit. So where you tied in those other ones, we're gonna take another set and we're gonna tie them in on the other side. So you kind of have one on this side right now, and we're gonna take and tie in these ones on the other side. So when you're done, you have those are the legs or the tail. Sorry. So we got tail antenna and legs on this oh, side, I legs see. on this side. So now you can fold this over your thread again and we'll just put another set on the other side. Yeah, it's kind of a, a managing everything that's already on there to kind of keep it out of the way. That's sometimes more of the work than anything. Yeah, and then just try to keep those, yeah, aim those so they're over there. There we go. Good. Yeah. And then you can just wrap forward a little bit more with your thread, so you're kind of right behind the eye of the hook. Good. And now we're going to wrap that chenille. This? Yeah, so we're going to do one wrap right between all the legs. So if you pulled those two out of the way, you do a wrap with the chenille right through the middle, and then once in front. There you go. And now pull those legs back. Go one more time. And then we're just going to tie it off. So then we're going to take our bobbin and go back. Over. So you're re going that way. So it's got. You got to think that when you cross over it, it's got to actually cross the material. So if you pulled your chenille this way, and then you came over it on top of it, mm -hmm. that's going to lock it down. Okay. There you go. So that should be secure. So do maybe just a couple more wraps to make sure it's good and locked in place.
Good. Yep. You, you can let the bobbin hang, and you can snip the chenille out of the way without cutting, without cutting the, the thread. There you go. So, no, he said we have this bigger, but anyway. that, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. So you can, what you can do is just snip that, so that it opens it up. So we have our antenna, um, and so now we're gonna, we would whip finish. So it, it's okay that you're going this way, mm -hmm. um, but normally we go forward. So me thinking about how, how to whip finish this is not gonna make much sense to me. So what I'm gonna do is just put a, just put it like a simple barrel knot over top of it. So we can hold all of our stuff in place. So whip finish, you could use a whip finish tool, but this is just oh, like just an overhand knot. If you do a couple of them, it's 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 good. It's sufficient. Good. So that's out of the way, so we can snip your thread. And then yeah, with these legs, now you can just kind of orientate them where you want them. So we kind of want two on each side. Mm -hmm. So you kind of just wiggle them around. Um, the yeah, out. so the tail straight out. So you can cut the tail to maybe be a little bit longer than the antenna. And then you take one wrap of that material. There you go. And then you pull these all four up like this, and then you can kind of get a gauge on the length you want. So if we get that one in there as well. And then I would probably cut them, cut them longer than you think you need to. So yeah, like cut underneath your fingers. I'd cut right below your thumbs. Yeah. kind of just move them around a little bit so they're kind of back on the side. This must be right, Gabe. Tim. Hi, Gabe. How are you? Yeah, hi. hi, buddy. Tim's gonna take you on the river camp and show you how to catch fish. <laughs> Just can't let it go. Just can't let it go. We all decided we're gonna pitch in and we're gonna get a whitefish mounted for you, so you can put on your mantle at home. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. We have any questions, Dana, at all from anybody? Needing answering? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's it's really quite literally you're using that chenille to yeah prop the legs, and that way because it's actually only the chenille holding them, you can kind of still maneuver them. Even if you're fishing them and it gets kind of messed up, you just pull them back down the side of the fly. Um, the legs aren't going to go anywhere because you secured them with the thread, but then the chenille is kind of what uh, can hold them into place. Sounds good in theory. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I, I missed the uh, first portion of that fly. So mm -hmm. you're tying in the you're tying in the uh, floss first, and then throwing the weight over top. Mm -hmm. Okay. You could go either way. You could go the lead first. Yeah. It depends. It is probably easier to put the lead and maneuver it on the hook without the thread on it. But it, either way, you want to do it. But more or less, the important thing is that you're 
you're using the floss to create the antenna and the tail in one shot yeah. before you put anything right. else on. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. It's just for the speed of when you're doing a whole bunch Actually, of them. Yeah. And you're only putting two legs on, you said? Yeah. In the middle? I only put two. Okay. That's not the, uh, that's not what a true stone has, but yeah. it's, I can tell you I've never noticed the difference on the river, so <laughs> unless you get a real picky trout. Yeah, yeah I guess because I don't catch fish maybe, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you'll realize you needed three legs. <laughs> three <laughs> legs, damn. Should have had three legs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the whitefish definitely don't care. How many legs you have? They just care how many how many red wire wraps you have on your hook. That's right, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, it looks like we're about ready, so let's get started on our next one. All right, so I'll show you what this is going to look like for you guys at home. What this fly is going to hopefully in the end look like. We call this a chubby Chernobyl. Uh, it's a Chernobyl ant, but it's the way it's tied, this is a really good representation of a, an adult stone. So we're gonna fish this for us on the bow. This is gonna be like June, July, once we, we if we ever get our stone fly hatched, that's when we're gonna start to fish it. Um, this one, we're gonna tie a golden stone version. You can also tie this uh, with dark foam, black foam, and a darker dubbing, and you can make a, uh, just make a, a darker stone. You kind of vary, vary the color of legs. These ones are a little dark. What we're actually going to use for the fly here is a little bit lighter colored legs. You could use barred legs. It doesn't have to be floss. Lots of options with this fly to kind of change it up and do what you'd like with it. Um, for this one, I'm probably just going to use like a brown or an orange. The, the actual dubbing we're using, if you can see here, um, this is a great Canadian dubbing. This is diamond dub, and this color is cinnamon. So ice dub cinnamon or whatever you want. We're just looking for, um, you're looking for some type of dubbing that's got a lot of sparkle in it and a lot of flash, just to kind of grab that attention on the bottom side of the fly. Okay, so in your pack for this, we had a long hook and a short hook. Let's go with the shorter of the two hooks that we gave you. Of course you put the wrong one on. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get our thread, our thread started behind the eye, and we'll work that thread back down again to the hook bend. We're gonna start by putting some flash on, so we kinda want a little bit of a thread base underneath it so it doesn't wanna roll on us when we're tying it on top. And I'm gonna end up somewhere back kind of in the middle we're just using some, some crystal flash. I, I feel like this is a really important piece of this fly. Um, I have forgot to put it on before and I, I do say I notice the difference in how it fishes. So it's good to have a, a generous clump of flash coming off the back of this fly. It grabs a ton of light. I hear McGratton say my name back there, I don't like it. <laughs> uh, there's no flash in that one? No. Somebody's missing what they're supposed to be doing. There we go. Everybody else? I miss like, if you double it over, yeah, it's not a big deal. You guys got your flash? Okay, so you're gonna wanna take all the flash you have it's enough for two flies, but what we'll do is we'll tie it in, and then you'll cut it off, and then you can use the, use the remainder for the next fly. Dana's squawking chairs. So I, I'm gonna tie this in about in the middle of the fly, and we're gonna, we're gonna work it back on top of the fly, so that when it's oriented, it's right on top of the hook at the back. So I'm just gonna take a nice loose collecting wrap, pull it down secure the front of that flash down, and then I'm just gonna guide it by kind of holding tension 
and pulling up on that flash, that's gonna keep it oriented right on top of the hook as I go back. What we don't wanna do is we don't wanna wrap so far back that it, it's heading down the angle of the hook at the bend. We wanna keep it up on top. So on this hook that we're using, it's right at the barb. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this first. Sometimes you like to leave it so you can gauge on the size of your foam. I'm gonna give myself about this much behind, so probably double the length from the point of the hook to the bend. Just so it's out of the way. And then we're gonna get a hold of our dubbing once you're once you've got that. Is that good? So I I'm about doubling the length from the point of the hook to the bend. So you're looking at about here. Yeah. Because you gotta think your foam's gonna hang off a little bit off the back. Yeah, that's perfect. Yep, that's good. You, I, I pre-cut mine, but it's a, I like when I gauge on this fly, I go from about the point of the hook okay. to that bend, yeah. and I double it to okay. about there. Because when you cut flash, it retracts itself yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I know this. Yeah, so <laughs> it's one of those things that kind of pull it tight. It's like mylar, and then it, it comes back. That's good. Is that clear? Yeah, yeah right about there, yeah. Mm, yeah, that's good. And then just cut off your tag of your thread so it's out of the way. Start it so high did up you start the flash in, in the, the middle. middle of the body? I did, just because then you can get, you can keep it oriented on top of the hook all the way back. So if right. you tried to do it only right at the bend of the hook, it can be tough to, it wants to roll on you around the hook. Yeah. Okay. Whereas when I did it, I held tension up on my flash and then wrapped back so that I could keep it up on top of the hook. And how far back were you coming off of the back of the... So I, I gauge it by going about from the hook point yeah. to the bend of the hook, I double it. So I go to about here. Okay. But so if I if you tie it actually in the opposite way, tie pull it so you tie the butts in here, so pull all the way back so it's like oh, I see tie in tie in like this. In so then you can hold tension up as you wrap back, gotcha. and you can cut the length that you and then want. You can cut the length that you need. Yeah. All right, guys. Once we've done that, we're gonna kind of go through a new. If anybody wants to what, sorry? Oh yeah. If, does anybody does anybody want to order pizza at all? We can order whatever we want to here. So if that's something people are game for. Yeah. Okay. So Brandon's in. <laughs> P, uh, pizza, yay or nay? Is anybody against pizza? <laughs> no. I don't think anybody's against it, Dana. Yeah. It's no fruit. Yeah. Yeah, don't put any fruit on a pizza. Don't that's on the pie. No, <laughs> that's right. If you're going to do it, do it right. Okay. We're going to go to our dubbing next. So this can be a little bit of a, it's a, it's nice to get introduced to it on a bigger fly cuz when eventually we are I don't want to, but we'll eventually tie some smaller dry flies and working I I don't like tying dry flies. I can be honest about it. I do it, but I don't like it. We're uh we got to It's what? Okay, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Lots of them. We're gonna we're gonna work on learning how to make a dubbing noodle. So what that essentially means is we're taking small amounts of this dubbing, and we're putting it between our fingers. So like you're playing a little baby violin for someone who's whining too much. You're basically doing that on the thread, and you're just thinking of winding that material. Okay. So I'll try to get. If you look up here, I'll try to do some up closer so you can see. It's a game of figuring out how much dubbing to actually use. I'll do it up here so you can see. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it and I'm going to roll it onto the thread. Okay? And I can I can brace it with my finger like this and spread it out a little bit. But essentially what we're trying to do when we create these noodles is this first one we're actually going to dub the whole body to the hook or to the hook eye and then come back. So we don't want it to be too bulky. So if you look at this fly, the underside, that's a pass there and back. So it is full, but it's not super, not super bulky, okay? So it's important to keep a nice thin dubbing noodle, as we call it. And for me, for this one, the first time, I'm gonna create a nice long one, kind of as long as I can, 
without being able to manage it still. If you wet your fingers, it does help as well, but it's a, it's a kind of a funny mix between if you have too much moisture on your fingers, it just wants to roll and spin instead of actually taking hold of that thread. So, so damp or just a little moist is a better. You can, you can wax, you can, <laughs> yeah. Dip your fingers in your beer, whatever you want. You can, uh, you can wax it. That definitely, it, it's maybe a little quicker way. I hate wax because I hate it on my fingers forever afterwards, but you're not wrong by doing that. It's a good option. Okay, so once you think you've kind of created a decent noodle, this one's not a great one. I'm gonna start right in front of that flash, but I don't want to pin that flash down. And you're gonna just start wrapping and you're gonna notice, oh, maybe it was a little thin, like right here, it's a little thin. So I'm gonna have to wrap back, get a nice, a little bit fuller, move forward again. Sometimes you gotta tighten that, that dubbing up on your, on your thread again as you're moving up. But this first pass, we want to be fairly lean because when we come back, we're gonna do another one. So you just keep, just keep adding some in as you move forward. And we want to stop and leave ourselves just about a hook eye, about a hook eye back is where we want to, we want to leave the dubbing from going up to there. So I've got to here, and now you see I've got one full pass, and that's about as much as we want on that first pass. If it look, if yours looks much bulkier than that, then you're going to have to go really lean on the way back because we don't want it to be super bulky. So now I'm just going to start heading back. As I run out of some dubbing, I can add a little bit more. Don't be afraid of keeping some tension on that dubbing so that we're actually making sure it's pinned down. Just a steady, yeah. Yeah, that's why it's kind of a nice introduction to it because we don't really have any precise we're not building the body of a mayfly or anything like that. We're just, it doesn't have to be perfect, but we, we like to practice to kind of, kind of learn how to make these little bit of a dubbing noodle. So then we want to stop with our dubbing. Once we've gone there and back, we want to, you're going to have to, so think of every time that we move our thread, advance it up, or if we're putting our foam on, or if we're putting our legs in or our wing, we're gonna have to put some dubbing wraps over it to cover up all the work we've done. So if I'm gonna decide to move my thread up a little bit, because what we do is we break this fly kind of into thirds, and that's where we're gonna put our foam on top and tie in our legs. So I'm gonna move back to about the hook point here, and if I had to move mine back, I would add a little dubbing to move it. We just don't wanna, we don't wanna open wrap with just our thread over what we did, because it'll just, it'll make it look like you cut a line through it. Okay, take a look at how we're doing. Looks good, Cam. Yeah, that looks good. Real chubby. So just work with a little, a little bit less AG. Like, um, you can once it's in, but you don't really need to on this fly. So like, in a pinch, I would take about this much. Just a tiny little melt. A lot, like a little goes a long way. So you can take that and just pull it right off the thread and it'll come right off. And then you're just, you're just winding it into that thread. It's kind of a weird, a weird combo. Like that? Yeah, and then when it gets to here, all you're doing is this. So as I do this, see how it, it wraps around that thread? Yeah. And if it balls up on you like that at the bottom, you can pull it off and just put some more, break it apart and put it back on. That looks good. Looks good, you happy with it? <laughs> <laughs> what's what's all this hanging down here? What's it doing? So go a little go a little farther back. Okay, so I want you to I want you to uh, I'm gonna let you even wrap. So just take your thread and wrap over this this flash. Just wrap a little farther back. Keep wrapping, wrapping, wrapping. I'll tell you when to stop. Good, right there. So now I want you to dub that piece in between, and then just finish at the point there where you finished. Brush her up a little bit. Good, good. All right. Not half bad. Not bad. Okay. So next thing we're gonna do, you guys should have uh, some little pieces of pre uh, pre-cut foam. 
So you can just cut this as you go out of a, so that I'm not good for promoting fly shops when it comes to foam because I, I don't like the actual manufactured foam that they sell. I really like a good craft foam just from a craft store. It's way more malleable, it's easy to work with. I find that my, it, it moves with your thread but your thread doesn't cut it which is sometimes if you use too thin of thread, like a 70 denier or something like that, you can actually cut your foam pretty easily. So that's why I'm using a 140 when I tie this stuff, because it just doesn't cut um, through it as bad. But I like this foam. This is just, you can get, this is actually just a quarter of the sheet. It's a huge sheet, it's like a dollar. So it goes a long ways. I'm using a, just a cutter, which I'll sh show you here. I bought, I just bought this from a fly shop. Yeah, and you can get all the different, they're pretty expensive. I think this is 20 for, for this one. Um, but what it does is it gives you this really nice shape to work with, and it's already pre-cut, so you're not trying to trim it to, to make it look like something else. So it always comes with a pad. You stick the, stick the foam in between, press it in until it's good and cut, and pull it out. <coughs> so once it's cut, it just looks like so. Be very careful with them because they're crazy sharp. And it's always going to leave you, just because of the shape of it, if you look at the shape, it's going to leave you a little tag here. I always just take, take my scissors and trim it so it looks, looks smooth. So then when you take this and you set it, set it on top of your hook. This is actually about the perfect size cutout for this size of hook too. Um, again, like I said, we're working in thirds, so we're going to want to imagine when you look at this finished fly, we kind of cut that fly into three pieces and that's where we put in the legs and the wing on each of those, okay? So when we set this foam on top, we want it to hang out and kind of go over top of the flash a little bit and we want it to hang out just a little bit over the eye. And that's kind of how we're, how we're evening it out. Try to keep it about even in front of the fly as it is behind. And now our thread is right about at that hook point. Now when we go to gather, gather a wrap on this foam, Again, we're going to take a nice kind of lo more loose collecting wrap so we can kind of hold it in place. Take another one, take a third. You can pinch it with your fingers to kind of keep it secured and then you can pull down, okay? And that show gives us this, this shape. But what you see here, guys, if you look up on the screen, you see that's only pinched down on one spot. I actually want to create a little bit of a wider gap that I'm going to put my materials in. So if you look at it here, I'm actually just gonna take and gather a little bit more of that foam and work it in. So now I got a little bit flatter section to work with, like so, okay? So that's what we want it to look like, a little bit wider. And once you get that done, then we're gonna grab for our rubber legs that came with that as well. I see, they just came in one big long piece, okay. Okay, so yours would have come in just one big long piece, so you're gonna fold it over and cut it in half, and you're gonna fold it over again and cut it in half. Let's see if I got a full one in here. These are all cut, I think. How are those all cut? Yeah. So with, this, with, this, uh, with these legs here, all I would do is I would fold it over and cut it you got enough for two flies here. Our legs don't have to be super long, so now you've got enough. This, this amount is good enough for one fly, so you're gonna fold it again. And cut it. And that's what we're gonna tie in for one side and then for the other, okay? Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna have to, yeah, so we want this length here is what we're going to use for one um, for one leg. So you're going to have to, if there isn't enough in there, just let me know when I have more here. Ugh. What's that? Okay. So this is going to be for one set of legs on this side. So we need to trim them so they're about yay long. So it's going to be about three times as long. Right. Okay. So just like we tied in our legs on our on our Jimmy legs, those middle set of legs, 
That's the same thing we're going to do here. So we want both of those pieces lined up. We're going to fold them. Yeah, so we're going to take two pieces, fold them around our thread, even up the back ends, the butt ends again. And then again, we're going to just tie them right in the middle of that opening we created by closing in on our thread in that foam. We're going to send half of our thread or half of the legs to the front, half to the back as they split. We'll take two more wraps in there, just li this light ones, they don't need to be tight. And then we're going to move those legs by just pulling on them just outside the foam. So move them down to right there. Make sense? So I tied, yeah, so I can pull them up again so you can see. I, I tied both on top. Woo. So they're all pointed straight off the top of the hook. And now, it's just a, it's a way of, kick, uh, of splitting a step so it's not, you don't have to do it twice. And then I just grab them and I can maneuver them down along the side. Because I've got three loose wraps in there, they're not gonna go anywhere, but it's enough that I can still maneuver them. These pieces for me are super long. I'm just going to trim them a little bit to get them out of the way, and then I'll, I'll cut them to the right length later. Do you wrap in front of them or not? No, I literally just suck down, a couple wraps in between, and then I, then I split them. Okay? <coughs> so we're going we're gonna to repeat the process as we move up, but what we do here is we go legs, and we're going to add our wing, and then we'll move up to the next time we do it, and we'll go legs, we'll go wing again. So you're going to have this wing material looking stuff. You should have, I believe, eight pieces. Count them for me there. Four or eight? I got, I got four. You got, you got four? Okay, so you're going to double it over, and I'll show you what we do with that. You got zero. Okay, well, that's you're a winner. You're the lucky winner. Must have been Dana doing, Dana doing those packs. <laughs> yeah, it's, these are actually just beard clippings that we bleached. <laughs> Oh, I don't know whether to be disgusted or proud. I don't know. Yeah. Dog hair dubbing. Okay, so this is um, it, this is Zelon. You can use Zelon or Antron yarn. I had some Antron here too. It, they're both pretty effective. We're not actually using this so much to float the fly, we're just using it to create a nice big wing, um, a pretty visible wing on top, and to be more honest, we're just using it so we can see the fly. More or less, that's what it's for. So, depending on how much you have and how, how like boisterous the wing, so I just took one little strand here. If you double that over, so you think of going around your, your thread, that's gonna double up and look about that big, which I'm happy with, that looks good. So what I'm going to do, same thing I did with my legs, I'm going to just double it over the, over the thread, try to match up those butt ends a little bit. We're going to come right up between those legs, and we're going to tie it in on top. Okay? <laughs> yeah, we're going to, so that's exactly right. Once you've got it on top, pull it backwards. The dubbing we put on next is going to help with this. We're going to pull it back and put some wraps in front of it as a bit of a dam. But what we actually do with the uh, with our dubbing coming in is going to actually make this even better. And so once we're done, we can comb these together. Well, or pull them right out. Once we comb the comb it together, it makes it look like it's bigger as well. But if you want to double up on this material, there's nothing saying you can't. Just double it up so there's more of it. And I'll show you what that can look like here. I'll do it together. So then I would just take two pieces, put them together. And that just gives you a thicker wing if you want it to be. OK, so now I want you to grab that dubbing. And just like we created a, double no a dubbing noodle before, we're going to do the same thing again. Um, just a really fine one. We don't want bulk here at all. Bulk is not the name of the game. 
when we're just covering up our thread wraps. So really all we're gonna do is take a really nice light wisp of this stuff, less than you think you need. We're just covering up our thread wraps and helping lean that Antron yarn back. So I don't have a super long noodle either. I'm gonna come up between the legs because we don't wanna push the legs back, we just wanna push the yarn back. So come between the legs, hold back that yarn. Take two wraps over, the, over it. We shouldn't need more than that. So one, two, and now that's angled that yarn back for me. And then I'm gonna pull that foam up and I'll make a wrap in front of it. And now again, like we said, we're gonna advance that thread forward. So when, when we advance it, we need to make another small dubbing loop, another really thin one, so we can cover up our thread wraps as we go. Or not show our thread wraps as we go, sorry. Question from the floor, what do we got? Which fly shop did I get my Band-Aid from? Um, no. I believe it's called Shoppers, Shoppers Drug Mart. Band-Aid brand, right? I did steal it from her. I don't have any action. I'm a paramedic without any band-aids that look real in my house. Okay, so once we've created that next, it is quite. Yeah, so we're just gonna dub forward. Um, sorry to repeat myself, just to advance that thread forward, if we were to just wrap with our thread, it would, it would cut like wire wood into our dubbing, and we don't wanna lose that shape we created. So by just doing uh, a, a small dubbing noodle, we can advance our thread. Uh, we're gonna advance to leaving about that much space um, behind the eye. Okay, so we're looking at a hook to, or sorry, a hook eye to two hook eyes back from the, from the head. Even thinner. Like just a, just a wisp, because we just got to cover the thread. That's all we got to do. Okay. Doesn't need to be much at all. Looks good, Adrian. I didn't do the thread. I didn't cover my thread. I don't really care. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> cheating, 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 cheating. Good, good, good. That looks good. All right. Okay. So now that, now guys that we're up at this next tying point, we're just gonna repeat the process. So I'm gonna gather the foam, tie the foam down, make a bit of a gap, then I'm gonna add my legs, then I'm gonna add my yarn, and I'm gonna dub over it, okay? No, no need to pull that foam tight. If you pull it down, check that length. If it's still, it's still out ahead of my hook eye a little bit, that's all we need to worry about. So I wouldn't try to pull on it. You don't wanna wreck anything you've done. Just lay it down, take that first loose collecting wrap, second one, pinch it to hold it in place, and just give a little tug. It's almost gonna concave the foam a little bit, so it's kind of rounded around your, uh, your dubbing, which is perfect, it's a, it looks, puts a little bit of a rounded shape to the body. So again, we're gonna repeat that process. We're gonna go legs. Find pieces here somewhere. We'll go with both legs, wrap it over, even up those butt ends. That's gonna be too short of legs. Tie the legs in on top again, pull them tight, let them go split the way they should, put a couple wraps over them to hold them in place. And then we're gonna pull those legs down each side Our camera turned off, so we're just gonna wait a second before it comes back on. Okay, so then we're gonna pull those legs down on either side again. Good. And again, I'm just gonna trim mine up roughly just to get them out of the way so they're not so, so much in my way. Say that again. Um, yeah, so I'm not I'm not trimming them yet because I like I'm just rough trimming so they're out of the way But then I like to lay them in my hand and I'll kind of show you how I gauge that once I get there um, 
sorry, wing. Okay. I'm gonna take that yarn, same thing like I did with the legs, double it over my thread. I want this to land right between those legs, right on top. Gonna put a couple of wraps. Don't have to get crazy here. This is where the, the game starts of trying to stay in between your leg. That's <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. How, uh, there, yeah, there's no good way to put that. You need to stay between the legs, put some wraps to lean that uh, yarn back. Um, you don't want to wrap in front of those legs because then it's going to send the legs back as well. And then repeat the, the dubbing process. So now we're going to dub up and we're going to cover up in the middle of that gap again. And remembering we're just doing a light, light dubbing. And if you dub a little bit longer noodle than you did the first time, then we can dub this and we're going to go through the middle twice, once in front, and we can whip finish and be done. Instead of having to add some more dubbing again. So I'm going to pull that back. Pull that back down, that's twice. I'm going to get the legs and that out of the way. Now I can dub right up behind the eye of the hook. And I'll whip finish it there. If you're wondering when we're going to cut the yarn, I'll show you that measurement as well. I leave it long until I get done so I can make that, that cut where I want to. Get our thread out of the way. Okay. So be careful when you, if you have a comb, if you're going to comb your wings kind of together so they, they meld a little better. If you don't do it quite right, you can actually pull them out. So you don't want to do that at this point of the game. Okay, guys. So if you, if you look at this for a second, this wing is ridiculous. But how we, how we cut it now is I'm going to pull them both back. I lay them back um, away from the back end of the fly. And I'm going to take and I'm going to cut these. So I want to leave about a hook gap in width behind for the back piece. And we're going to snip them both off together. And there's our wing. Say it again. Uh, this vise is a stone faux caiman, is what it's called. It's uh, the caiman. It's very similar to the, the jaws that are used on a regal vise. Um, I've had this one for a year. I'm, I'm, I'm not overwhelmed by it, but it's a good vice. It's a, it was my backup vice for a while, but I've been using it exclusively now, so it's a pretty good vice. But yeah, stone faux caiman is what it's called. Okay, so that's our wing, our wings cut. When I cut the legs, I like to come underneath them and kind of get them all out so I can get a good look at them. And basically what I'm, it, again, like we do with the Jimmy, we're looking about the same length as our Jimmy legs. legs. Uh, we want to keep them, cut them longer than shorter at first for sure. I'm looking at just under the full length of the body is kind of what I'm thinking for a length. So I'll make a cut. Yeah, and that's, I'm, I'm happy with that, with that length there. So if I'm thinking about from the point of the fly to about that rear tie-in for length. Somewhere between there and the, and the back, about the length of that foam. You can get a pretty good gauge from looking at the top ones. Just repeat it, cutting the bottom ones. And you can kind of mess with them a bit. They're probably in place pretty good now. They're not going to move too much on you. But as you can see, the underside of the fly, we got our nice even dubbing. We got our flash under the butt of the tail. That big wing's there for us. We can see it. If we put a little bit of uh, floating on that wing, it really helps keep this, float, this fly up. But this fly is great for using as a hopper dropper because that foam really does help and assist in holding that uh, whatever we put underneath it up. You can tie these bigger too. So this is this would be more of a actually this might be on the little bit of the small side for a, uh, a Bow River stone. We get some really big stone flies here, so you can go quite a bit bigger. 
not like the size of a, like a salmon fly, but you could tie this also in the version of a salmon fly. It just you're going to be about that big instead of this big. So lots of, lots of different ways and things you can do with this fly. Um, color changes, leg changes. A lot of times we use this as a hopper dropper system in, in cutty water, so down in the old man or wherever else we're fishing. Um, really versatile fly. Come around and see how you guys are doing. That's good. Yeah. I didn't have a lot of that scantron. Yeah, no, that's 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 actually a, that's a better like mine might be actually a little bit thick, but that's that's good. It's more for you to see. Like I think the fish yeah. can see the profile because this does sit really nice in the water, but I think the fish can just see that white profile of the wing. Oh, is that I right? think I like. I mean, I don't know why else it would be on there than for us to see it, but. Can fish really see color? I think so. I think they can. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody asked me that the other day, what? and I go, you know what? See, they see green the best. I read something. That really? Yeah. What? Green the best. I can't hear you. Oh, oh yeah. Bruce, this is a good question. Tell, tell, okay, wait a second. We're going to wait for Dana to turn a camera over here. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Oh, he's God. not. Quick, Dana, quick. Okay, so we got a question for you. So, okay, tell us what you do for work or what you've worked in for the last however forever well, you work I'm in a fisheries. fisheries biologist by training okay so this question will be directed to you then all right gentleman asks can fish actually see color yes but not the way that you can see color okay explain um, more of an ultraviolet kind of my understanding is they see more in an ultraviolet spectrum okay mm. they see light they see color in a different spectrum than than you and I perceive color so if I'm if I tie something in tan versus black, they're gonna see the difference in that color. In theory, yeah. In theory, their eyes aren't built the same as ours are. So don't destroy everything we believe in as fly fishermen and fly tires. So, so, <laughs> so you don't want me to say most 99% of the flies are for fishermen. For fishermen, that's what I don't want you to say. Okay, yeah, they do see color, but they don't see it the same way that we see color. Okay, all right. That's the simplest way. Okay, all right. I can't hear you. I know. Whitefish? No, I don't. I don't catch whitefish. <laughs> Brian catches whitefish. Yeah, fish. can whitefish see color? That's a better question. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. McGratton, folks. <laughs> White whitefish can only see red. Whitefish can only see red worms. Red worms. All right, cool. That's our resident biologist. Brian. Thanks. Thanks for that. You good? Oh yeah. Oh nice. That's good. Yeah. That's not bad at all. Heck yeah, that'll fish. Yeah, that'll fish. Take it, take it to Cuddyville. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, I got nothing bad to say. Nothing at all. Yeah, you can. Yeah, it's it's nice because you can vary everything you want with it. Some waters you find have like a little darker body or a little whatever. For sure. Go to black foam for a black storm. But yeah, basically that's the uh, technique right there. That color. is that is and, the technique. Uh, you can, like you said, mix and match whatever colors you want to go with. Yeah, and, absolutely. And see what works, right? Yeah. Yeah. I I keep a lot of these in my box. I really like them because they're actually they're super simple to tie as well. So I mean you I mean if you go to a fly shop, you see the amount of stone flies they have. Yeah. There's definitely there's some that work better in certain systems, but like if I was to carry one for everything, I'd carry that. Because you can not only can you use it for your hopper dropper setup on everything, but it's such a it's just a good all around pattern. Just everything. Yeah. yeah. We're actually we've been especially apparently some the, people uh, especially with that color body too. Yeah. 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 I I mean this is this is obviously the golden stone version, but right. I carry them in, in, in black as well. But yeah. I actually really like a black black foam and a purple. And the purple body. And the purple body. Yeah. yeah. Purple dub. But purple dub. Yeah. What but kind of they dub? is that like just a, like a ice this dub? Is th yeah, this I you, ice dub is normally what I use. This stuff is called a diamond dub. Oh, okay, diamond dub, right? Yeah, but yeah. same same stuff. Right. But they apparently me and Dana were talking about this, and apparently that they've been people have caught permit on them. Really? On a Chernobyl. So we're gonna take some to the Oman and. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Right, like catch one on like our, our local like fly. Like throwing a hopper out on. Uh, on some water. Why on not? On some water, and yeah. the permit are taking them off yeah. the top. That's crazy. Right. That's like unheard of. I know, so that's what I want to yeah. maybe it's tie some. In, maybe it's those Indo permits yeah, a little bit <laughs> different than the other ones, right? Hopefully. Yeah. We'll find out soon. Yeah. Cool. How are we doing, E? <laughs> <laughs> Struggling. That's good, Spence. 
Yeah, that's good. That looks really good. Scale a little longer next time, maybe. Or um, if I would go longer on anything, it would only be your your Antron if, okay. if you had enough of it or longer. I w oh, when yeah, I yeah, when I, I, I pull it, it back, I pull it together, yeah. and I would cut it back behind where, you, where your flash is. Flash. And then okay. that just makes this one a little longer, and this one stands up. Yeah. And this is actually how it rides. It rides back like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when this sit, it's gonna sit back over top of that back yarn, and yep. it just. It's, okay, it's yeah, like so that. you're almost going right to the end of the flash. With yeah, that. so uh, okay. when I when I draw them both back together, I pull them, yeah. and I'm going to snip behind okay. that flash. Yeah, yeah I meant that right. No, it's good, but it's great. The pattern's good. I'd fish that. Well, you should. <laughs> <laughs> fish it. E, what's going on, man? I made it an amputee. You made it an amputee? <laughs> oh, not the rescue legs. Those yeah. never go in well. <laughs> never. No, this is going to be good. That's all right. Add them in. Like you said. Fish don't even care, do they? No. You just ruined my world and said they can hardly see color. I think I pulled the foam too far. Not far enough forward. What about it? Yeah. It's a three-point whitetail buck. First deer ever, right? First deer ever. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Great. Because <laughs> I cooked it. Because I cooked it immediately. That's awesome. Yeah. Not everybody gets a buck in their first go around. Yeah, I had patience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. You shot it with a rifle? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Three point, I would just say it's called a six point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they grow. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now that I tie it in. Yeah, I, you know what? I would just whip finish. Don't try to make it any better or worse. So, you can, you, can you see that eye? Yeah, you can see that eye. So just tip it up. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Good. Yeah, get a turn on it. Go for one more, and I would tip it now. And then I just tip the butt end, so not the hook, the other end. So you tip that, so it go like this and tip. Yeah. Tip it this oh, way. Yeah. Let it come off the back end first. Yeah, we we screwed that up. It's okay. And then you pull it forward and let that come off the hook. I'm not sure that we got any of that on there. When you crowd when you crowd it like this much, not that that it just it happened because we added in legs, but it's almost e easier to do that um, half hitch that I taught you last yeah. time, just to put a couple of half hitches. Just because when does any of your tools have it on it? Um, do you have a bobbin that has the half hitch tool on it? Uh, Actually, this will work just fine though. Oh no, it won't. But it would. Um, I'll grab you one here. I know there's one over here. Do you mind if I borrow this for a sec? Yeah, bro. Yeah, so with one like this, we can, it's got a little. So out here, I'm gonna pull, pull this out for a second. Even simpler than doing it like that. Draw a little bit of this up. Finger to kind of let it draw back off of there. Okay, pulls tight. Okay, let's give it a try. You don't have to wrap back over it yet. Just one, two, three. So don't, yeah, perfect. Wrap right in front of the other. Yeah. Mic check. <laughs> Look at you go. Then yeah, you just kind of orient it. Okay. Your legs might be a little long, but I haven't cut them yet. Oh, that's probably why then. Yeah. Good. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. No worries. All right, guys, if you want, you can go ahead and tie your other stone, and I can help you if you have any questions. How you doing?
Good. That looks good. Oh. Well, I, yeah. but, I mean, I'm doing fine. Just trying to figure this out. Yeah, oh, the whip finish. <laughs> I learned it right-handed the other day to try to teach it, and it's because I'm left-handed. I just don't think that with that hand. It's so hard. I, was, I, I can do it with one finger. <laughs> yeah, I just do it with one finger. Yeah. Just to, to, I can. If say, say you're at the end of a dry fly, your thread breaks, it's like, oh, oh. Crap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what do you do? I only do? have this much thread left. <laughs> yeah, I do the half hitch. <laughs> yeah. Like Done. Yeah. Just, just to get a couple half hitches in. Okay, so oops, sorry. let's pull your pull your thread out of it for a second. I just need to re reorientate myself to it. So if we go, grab it with the hook, wrap around this, and then let this turn. So I make a four. So you see how the generally the four what that looks like, right? Then upside down four, and then this I'm just drawing this up to here. So now that that little hook is right there. As soon as I start rotating, what does it do? It crosses, it crosses over the line. Okay. So when I come to that line and I cross over it, now it's creating wraps around itself. Oh, I see. So as I go, I miss the hook, but, but when I go around that, every time it's wrapping back over itself, and then I give a little with the bobbin, tip up so it comes off there and then I just use that hook to direct it down to come off. Perfect. Makes sense? Yep. So hook, hook to here and then let that flip up, create your four and then it's just this going around itself like that. Okay, yeah. perfect. Cool. Good, okay. All right guys, well thanks to everybody back back home for watching hopefully if you didn't get to watch it live with us you can uh, you can catch up later this week um, that's our episode three from fly fishing bow river uh, this is thursday night fly time i'm tim hepworth thanks for coming and joining us guys hopefully we'll see you next time all right thanks